Deacon Swan on the pod. We've been wanting to do this for a while. It took us six weeks to get it together, and we're here. <laughs> game day going to Lawrence, Kansas. Deke said it was the first time game day's ever been there. We're checking schools off the list for college game day. You know Herbie's going to be fired up, and you know the coach is going to be fired up. Please put some respect on Coach Corso's name. Get him some <laughs> coffee and ready to rock for three hours. I want to start off with you can see on the screen deke's picks i call him deke for y'all don't know my dad loves him he calls him deke as well but 59 and 31 and 2 that is his record against the spread now deke is excellent at mental math i am not we will not reference an audio message that i sent him a couple weeks ago about some terrible mental math but i think this is around if i can remember We'll have to clarify. 68% clip? I mean, this is insane. 65. 65. 65. This is a rate where Deke is in an echelon to where this is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. He's winning people money. We've wanted to do this for multiple years. We're finally tracking his picks, and it's awesome to see him succeed like this because this is a phenomenal record. Little TCU Horn Frogs, Jayhawks. We got the spread at minus seven. I'm going to toss this over to Deke. We're going to get all of his picks. I'm going to jump in with some games that I want to talk about. We got some of the games listed up on the screen, but we are here right for Deke's against the spread picks. All right, Deke, what are we looking at in this game? I know the crowd's going to be jumping with game day. I know. Hey, Pat McAfee, the uh, the insurgent blood into game day has really got their set absolutely pumped up. I mean, the App State stuff with Luke Combs was absolutely electric. He's been, he's been awesome on the show. You know, I was able to grab this line on open when it started at TCU minus five. I talked to you and, and, and Poon both on Sunday saying, you know, when these lines come out in the afternoon, sometimes that might be the best spot for you to be able to grab it. In this case, I was looking for this line to be closer to double digits. So the fact that it came out well under a touchdown to me just felt like absolutely the right side to take. And lo and behold, look at what's happened over the course of this week. It's already creeped up to seven. I think it even touched seven and a half for a, for a, for an afternoon before getting bet back down to the seven number. So Iowa State completely outplayed Kansas last week. They outgained the Jayhawks by more than 100 yards. They held the offense to 213 total yards. They just could not convert uh, in the kicking game. And TCU and Max Duggan are going to present an offensive challenge unlike anything Kansas has faced this season, uh, the closest being when they went to, to West Virginia. Um, but I, I, have, I have a hard time seeing the Jayhawks stay with TCU after halftime. I have a feeling this game is going to have some fireworks leaning over in the game, as I do almost every week, that Kansas plays a competent offense, um, as I just don't see their defense ever stop anybody. Um, but like I said earlier off the jump, kind of have always liked this spot for TCU. Uh, the fact that they, I got them at minus five. I still think they're a solid play at minus seven. I think they win the game by two scores or more. So that's kind of uh, what I'm seeing in the game. So Deke and I were talking extensively throughout the Iowa State and Kansas game last week. And you need to understand the ups and downs of a collegiate kicker. Actually, Deke, what was your quote? Was it on the pod last week? What well, was the quote? Last, the kick? last week it was uh, the sex life of a college kicker. It's the definition of volatility. <laughs> yeah, bro. This guy was Shank City. Shank Dude, City. Sometimes, sometimes they just don't have it. Sometimes they don't have it. We were both on Iowa State, and we felt like it was the right side, and, you know, Turnovers in the red zone, like Deke stated, plus the missed kicking game. And if any of you had caught the TCU Oklahoma game in the morning earlier, dude, Max Duggan with Sonny Dykes is a combo. So I really like where Deke's at. He's he texted me. He, we had conversations prior to like this is like two seasons ago or. I don't know if my timeline is accurate, but we'd guess the lines. We, we'd call each other up and be like, hey, man, what are you thinking about Team A, Team B? What do you think the line is? We'd read some stats out. So before, Deke was like, man, I'm taking, I'm taking TCU in a, in a double-digit spot. I don't even know what the line is. He referenced, I think it was up to 12. Like He, was, he is committed to taking the TCU squad 
to win by double digits. And I like that take, man. I really do. And I'm going to ride that with Deke as I do with a lot of these picks. You guys are going to uh, catch on with that. I think this is an excellent game in the morning. We It's up on the screen as well. The Vols of Tennessee going in to Baton Rouge, LSU. Not a night game. We're still up. You know, Deke and I are like, hey, is neck going to be played? Is a bang going to hit the neck? We'll have to listen for that. But I wanted to get your take here, Deke, because – we got Tennessee ranked number eight. LSU just jumped in to the top 25, just getting by Auburn. I mean, that was a rocky start last week against Auburn. But this is a this is a matchup. It's minus three Vols, Deke. Interested to see what you have here. We got the Vols to play Alabama next week. So that would be an insane top 10 matchup. That's in Knoxville. So interested to get your take here, Deke, in the morning uh, game. Yeah, interesting spot for Tennessee, as you mentioned. You know, a little bit of look ahead. Bama coming in, in into uh, Knoxville next week uh, for the for the third Saturday in October. I think it's actually maybe maybe they have a bye. I'm trying to think. No, no, it's the third Saturday in October. Uh, so yeah, it would be next weekend. But uh, yeah, obviously you mentioned Bam can't play neck in the morning, or at least if they do, they're going to get into some serious trouble. However, I did see that beer sales in the stadium gates are going to open at 9 a.m. local time for uh, down in Baton Rouge. So you better believe that even if the band ain't playing the music, they are still going to be rowdy as all get out. You know, Brian Kelly, although there hasn't been a complete game yet from LSU, right? The offense doesn't show up against Florida State. The defense doesn't show up last week against Auburn. They still have one of the most talented two deep rosters. And so they're capable of putting it on anybody in, in a surprise spot, especially at home. I'm not convinced that Tennessee is actually as good as the AP ranking says they are. I think they're number eight in the poll right now. You know, who have they re- I mean, They beat a Florida team by five. Um, a Florida team that's really struggled to score. They gave up 33 uh, in, in that spot. And then, you know, they, they beat a backup backup QB on the road in Pittsburgh in overtime. And you can make the argument that really they, they kind of got bailed out in that spot too. But the one bright spot for, for Tennessee has been the play of Hendon Hooker. It was elite last season. It's been just as good this year. I don't know what happened between the Hendon Hooker that played for Virginia Tech in 2019 versus what we've seen in 2021 and 2022 for Tennessee. It does not look like the same player at all. He may have played himself into a draft board come next April. That's how well Hendon Hooker has played, how efficient he has been, and he doesn't turn the ball over. And anytime you do not turn the ball over in the college game, you give yourself a chance to win. So we got a short number here on the road in a conference game in a hostile environment. It's a stay away spot for me on the line. Um, I saw the total in this game. I think I think I saw it sitting in the low 60s. Be interesting to see. You're either going to either get two two LSUs, right? You're either going to get the LSU who can't stop anybody and Tennessee's going to put up 45 or you're going to get the LSU defense who stands tall in which case then I think you might get a lower scoring game. So kind of pick your game script accordingly. You'll know early what kind of game it is, in my opinion. You'll know by the end of the first quarter whether or not LSU's defense came to play or they did not. And then maybe you could look at a live a live bet scenario on what the total is. So We got number 11 Utah at number 18 UCLA. Utah minus three and a half. I had an incorrect pick last week. I was very high on those Huskies. Deke said, hold on on the pod last week on those Friday nights when you're catching that three, three and a half, a road favorite, be careful. Friday nights like that, they seem to take your money, and that's exactly what happened. UCLA had it rolling, and they beat the Huskies. I was incorrect. I'm interested to see. This is a big-time game in the Pac-12. Whittingham, Chip Kelly, Deke, you have a play? What's your take here? Yeah, I think last week you saw the fact that UW had yet to leave the friendly confines of Seattle, and they came and played a road game on a Friday night down in the Rose Bowl, and they were not ready in the first first half. They were sloppy. They fell behind by 20-plus points, and then they were down 24 late and rallied off two touchdowns and two two-point conversions, but 
were just unable to get the ball back and, and, and try and go in for for that uh, game tying score and two point conversion to try and force OT. DTR was electric uh, in the in the matchup against U Dub. Obviously, he does a little shimmy shake, uh, easy score uh, down at the goal line to kind of bust that game wide open. But I really think DTR's highlight reel is coming back down to earth this week, man. Utah in a season where they're playing for more than just the the school name on the jersey. Obviously, with the player uh, who unfortunately passed away, you know they, they're a legit football team and a legit football program. Their physicality wears teams down in the second half. I think you saw that last week from a, an emotionally gassed Oregon State squad who kind of was able to hang around in the first half at Utah. But then once the second half came around, I think Utah rallied off 24 straight to close that game out. So and, and absolutely just blanked Oregon State in the second half. Their physicality really does wear teams down outside of the SEC. And that's why I think they've had so much success in Pac-12 play, specifically against some of these schools from California who lack the size and physicality up front that, like I said, some of the uh, SEC schools have. So, you know, I don't trust the Bruins uh, squad to close out games. I thought that they really pulled, pushed their foot off the gas last week. I th they're still super banged up on the defensive front. I think that that's a part of the reason why they can't close games is because when they get teams – into a passing game script. They don't necessarily have the pass rush to be able to take advantage of the fact that they know pass is coming. So I expect Utah to go ball control, efficient offense, and Kyle Whittingham to get another W against a California school. I think uh, if I were able to pull up the stats before the pod today, it's an absurd number for Kyle against uh, California schools, all of which uh, did not hire him So when they've had vacancies. Uh, and he, all he's done is turn that Utah program into a West Coast juggernaut from the Mountain West, now into the Pac-12, preseason Pac-12 favorite. Um, I think that them, short road favorite here, minus three and a half, just talked about how sometimes you got to be wary of those short road favorites. And this spot, I actually think that the line is tempting you to take UCLA plus the three and a half. I'm on the opposite side. Give me Utah and the Utes minus three and a half all day. I love it, man. Cameron Rising, I just pulled it up looking at his stats. Ever since, there were some turnover issues and just didn't seem comfortable in that week one uh, loss in Gainesville. You were on the Gators as well. That was a good call. It seems like they are not only getting him rolling with the passing efficiency, but he's also ground chucking a little bit. I like that play. If they get this dub, they're probably jumping in the top 10 and they need it. And that's a, that's a UCLA squad high emotions on friday now you got to go ahead you had a longer week now you got to implement it again so i'm interested to see what happens there i'd take the utes as well to cover